Hi guys, welcome back to the Mina Does Art Stuff YouTube channel. My name is Mina and on this channel we do art stuff. And I've just realised I have misplaced something I need. One second. Uh, Alright, a little while ago, last year, you'll have seen that I set up this watercolour palette with the Michael Harding watercolour paints. This is the palette that I put together. I did add in one Rembrandt colour here so that we're not talking about that one today. We're just talking about the other 15 colours um, by Ma Michael Harding that I purchased to try out. And um, I got a comment on one of the videos. I posted two videos about it. First was the unboxing sort of first impressions and the second one was where I created the palette and then uh, did the painting that I showed in that video. I got a comment on that video which was very fair and it was very it wasn't rude it was a very polite criticism of the video which I always appreciate I always take on feedback and I'm always happy to receive feedback um, in a way that is respectful <laughs> if that makes sense and this person commented saying that um, whilst the video was great and all the pa painting was great but I didn't actually talk about the paints that much and what I thought about them I spoke more about the palette and the paper that I was using which was actually a fair fair assessment of that video and I think maybe I got a bit flustered I was in a bit of a rush towards the end of filming that video I'm just trying to remember what sort of mindset I was in at the time I don't really know why I didn't speak more about the paints and I thought you know what that is fair for someone who wants to try out these paints or potentially wants to purchase something you might want a bit more information so I have taken a bit of time over the last couple of days of well today and yesterday and I have done a sort of comparison set of swatches in my 100% cotton cuddy sketchbook uh, or watercolor sketchbook and I thought we would go through them and talk a little bit about the Michael Harding watercolors compared to some of the other colors that I have in my um, stash of watercolor paints most of these are based off of colors I have in tubes I probably have more colors that are in pans but I didn't want to pull out all my palettes and turn this into like a super super long video so for most of these I have a maximum of four or five different samples some I have less of some I have yeah I don't think I have anything in here that's more than five other options mostly around three or four other options from my stash so we can compare um, how similar paints from other brands look and so you can see there's something a bit more unique about the Michael Harding ones compared to some of the others or or what Okay, so that's the that's the plan for today. Um, by the way, the paints have dried beautifully and they re-wet really nicely from dry as well. So just wanted to put that out there. Um, I do have some video of me creating these uh, pages and swatching them and stuff. So I will probably insert that in now with a bit of music if you would like to watch. And then I'll see you on the other side where we will talk about it in a bit more depth.
Okay, so these aren't in any particular order. I kind of just went with what was in front of me. Uh, and like I said, most of the examples are from my tube paints. What I have, I didn't go digging into all of my pan paints and stuff like that. I have a couple with Roman small paints as examples, um, as alternative examples. And I'll point those out. Those are obviously, uh, if you don't know, Roman Schmall is a brand that only sells their paints in pans at the moment. But that's the only ones where I've taken the paint from pan, I think. Um, otherwise, all the others, everything is from the tubes. So if you see any shiny patches anywhere, it's probably just because I got a little bit too much pigment from the tube. And um, yeah, so that's that. So first off, we'll start with Moonlight. And this was a colour that I originally thought was going to be a bit of a dupe for Daniel Smith's Moonglow because it has the exact same pigments included. However, as you can probably see here, uh, this is Daniel Smith's Moonglow and then this is Roman Schmall's Shadow Violet. As soon as I swatched Daniel Smith's Moonglow next to Moonlight, I could see that this was a lot more purple and this is a, and Moonlight is a lot more grey. Um, both of them granulate. But then I thought maybe it's more similar to Roman Schmall's Shadow Violet, which is a darker, slightly more greyed out version, I, I feel, than Moonglow. So I swatched that one as well. And yeah, I would say the Shadow Violet by, Moonglo by Roman Schmall is a closer match to Moonlight than Moonglow is, but it's still not a perfect match. I'd say the Shadow Violet kind of goes in between the two. Um, Moon Glow is more red, has more purple, like reddish tones showing through than Moonlight, and whereas Roman Schmall has a slightly, I guess, a bit more blue showing through than Moon Glow, but not as much as Moonlight, if that makes sense. So, I w if I was to rank them in sort of like color order, it would be Moonlight, Roman Schmall, Shadow Violet, and then Moon Glow, um, sort of in sort of like color progression kind of way. So, anything that's marked with a uh, red asterisk is the Michael Harding paints and any that I've marked with a little blue dot is the one that I out of the colors I'm comparing is the one I consider to be the closest match to the Michael Harding one but I do feel like the Moonlight color is a bit more of a unique one um, it'd be nice for shadows and other sort of darks and stuff like that and you can obviously tweak it with adding other colors to it but um, I definitely say that's definitely more one of that's definitely one of their more unique mixes. It's not like other colours that I have. Then we move on to another one of their unique, more unique mixes, and that's Belladonna. You can see here there's a mix of PV23, which is dioxazine purple or dioxazine violet, PR112, which if I'm not mistaken is naphthol red, and PB29, which is ultramarine blue. Um, and it gives a really lovely, sort of slightly warmer toned purple. Um, and then I compared it to a few other colours. I compared it to just straight up dioxazine violet. This is a Sennelier version. And you can see that's a lot more blue. Then I tried it against Paul Rubens Royal Purple, which is PV19 and PB29. This is more similar to Daniel Smith's Imperial Purple. So it's again, more blue showing through than in Belladonna. Then I thought maybe Perilene Violet, that's PV29, again, but that's far more red tone, so that's definitely not comparable to Belladonna. It's, it's much more sort of brownie red sort of purple. Then we tried, or I tried Daniel Smith's Rose of Ultramarine, which is PV19 and PB29. So similar, it's got a violet or red pigment and a blue pigment, so a similar sort of mix, a similar sort of vibe, but still a bit more of the red showing through. And then we tried Roman Schmall's Mineral Violet. That's probably, I think, a bit of a better match to Belladonna. But again, I think Belladonna falls somewhere in between a Rose of Ultramarine and a Mineral Violet. I don't think either one is particularly a good match or a good alternative. I kind of feel like this one fits in between the two colours. So, you know, if Roman Schmall's Mineral Violet is too blue for you and Rose of Ultramarine is too pink, then maybe Belladonna would be a good in-between colour um, that kind of doesn't granulate as much either. Both of these are fairly um, strong, strongly granulating colour separating mixes, whereas Belladonna doesn't separate and granulate as much. 
So if you want a nice pre-mixed purple that doesn't granulate um, but falls somewhere within this sort of hue range, then this might be a good choice for you. Um, then we've got the Bright Green Lake by Michael Harding, which is a really lovely bright colour. I kind of equate it to similar to like a May Green kind of colour. And I do have a May Green from um, Schmincke and from White Nights actually, but they're in pans, so I didn't dig those out. I did compare it to Holbein's Leaf Green, which I think is a very similar hue in its washed out uh, state rather than mass tone and I couldn't get a really strong mass tone colour from the leaf green and then um, Daniel Smith's green gold is a little bit more earthy I would say in its overall colour than the bright green lake I would probably use both of them in similar situations or for similar purposes so I wouldn't feel the need to have both on my palette but that's just me personally I feel like to this you could add a little bit of orange or a bit of red to get that slightly more muted out color or even a bit of brown depending on what tone you wanted to go for you could quite easily turn this color into something like this if that is what you wanted um, but again I say the tones are maybe a little bit more similar when you're getting to the lighter end of the color washes um, so yeah I like this mix I think it is a little bit unique as you get a nice darker green um, more sort of spring green in the mass tone and you get a nice light wash sort of leaf green um, in sorry you get the darker color in the mass tone and the lighter leaf green in the wash um, so I think this one has for a lighter color for a lighter value color it has a nice range of value um, usually lighter colors it's quite hard to get a dark and a light and because it's all fairly light value overall uh, but I would, I do like this one. I do think it's a little bit different and not quite your standard light green sort of colour that you would get. Um, okay, and then moving on here, we have yellow benzamidazolone, which is PY151. And I don't actually have many other, I don't I only have one other PY151 in my uh, stash of paints, and that is White Knight's Aurelian. Uh, which is also PY151 and you, I would say that's pretty much a perfect match. Maybe this one's a bit more pigmented than the White Knights, but that could just mean I squeezed out a little bit too much pigment there, I don't know. But the hue is pretty much identical, so um, i definitely say pick one over the other. The White Knights, if you can get it, is definitely cheaper than the um, Michael Harding, but um, I think the White Knight tubes are like less than f around three to four pounds a tube for 10 mils uh, compared to the Michael Harding, which I think this one is a series one paint and it's, uh, I think those are around 11 pound 50 or something like that on Jackson's. Don't quote me exactly. Um, I'm pretty sure I'll have them all. I'll have the um, Jackson's page links for you down below. It is an affiliate link which um, helps me out if you do make any purchases. It doesn't cost you anything extra, I just get a small commission from Jackson's for uh, uh, sending you their way. Um, which I greatly appreciate. Anyone who has and does use my affiliate links, um, it really helps me out. But uh, all that to say, I will have as much of this link down below for you as I can and I'll also list out all the colours that I that, that I compared and things like that. Um, but yeah, this is the only other sort of comparable I found. I'd say this is, it's not quite a lemon yellow. It's not as sort of garish as a le lemon yellow, but it would serve the purpose of a cool yellow on my palette. Then we have Yellow Lake, which was PY180 by Michael Harding. And again, that is a more unique pigment to my paint collection. I don't have any other equivalent. I don't have a PY180 anywhere else in my stash in my palettes or in my paints which is why I wanted to try that pigment um, I would say I tried it against Winsor & Newton's Cadmium Yellow Pale which is a true cadmium PY35 Schmincke's Pure Yellow PY154 and Sennelier's, Sennelier's Yellow Sophie PY93 I think personally that Sennelier, Sennelier Yellow Sophie is the closest match but in the mass tone, I feel like the Yellow Lake is that little bit warmer. But it's not quite a good match with the other two colours. I think that's probably the closest of the 
three that I've tested out against it. Uh, but let me know what you think. <laughs> And then down here we have the Quinacridone Gold by Michael Harding. I do actually have more Quinacridone Gold paints than these five here, but I just had to limit it, otherwise it, this would have taken forever. Um, so I've got the Quinacridone Gold by Michael Harding, which is PY150 and PR209. I'm pretty sure every version of Quinacridone Gold, yeah, every version of Quinacridone Gold I have on here has the PY150 pigment in it, which is nickel azo yellow. And that gives you that nice sort of brighter yellow tone showing through in the wash of the colour and the mass tone is definitely more of an orangey shade. Um, the Sennelier Quin Gold is, um, has the PY150 along with PR101, uh, so like a red iron oxide type pigment. Um, Daniel Smith's is PO48 and PY150, so a orange, uh, burnt orange. Um, again, I think I had a little bit too much pigment on the paper here, which is why it's spread quite a lot, but you do get that nice brighter yellow in showing through in the wash uh, for that one as well. We have Da Vinci's Quinacridone Gold, which is very similar in sort of pigment as the um, Michael Harding one. It's PY150 and PR206, so it's a Quinacridone Red rather than PR209. Um, then we have Sennelier Quin Gold. Sorry, that's Schmincke. If I, know, if I said Sennelier, that was wrong. The, the second one was Schmincke Quin Gold. This one is Sennelier Quin Gold. PR101, PY150, and PR206. So this is almost like a bit of a mix between the Da Vinci and the Schmincke one. Um, again, it's quite nice. This one is a little bit on the streakier side when painting it down. But again, I love that sort of golden hue in the mass tone. I'd say the Da Vinci is more orange in the mass tone than the Sennelier. And this hue is more closely resembling the Quin Gold from Michael Harding. And then the M. Graham Quin Nickel Quinacridone Gold is um, is here. This is PO48 and PY150. So this is, this is the same mix as the Daniel Smith Quin Gold. But you can see the Daniel Smith one is a little bit more orange than the M. Graham. But overall, I'd say the closest match for the... Michael Harding Quinacridone Gold is the Schmincke Quinacridone Gold hue. I mean, between the ones I've tried on here. I'd say the Michael Harding probably has a stronger yellow tint in the wash than the Schmincke does. But overall, I'd say they're fairly close um, and quite different from the other hues on this page. Then we have the Scarlet Lake, which the pigment that Michael Harding uses, PR170, is not your traditional Scarlet Lake pigment. PR170 is more like a, I think it's a carmine or madder lake type pig pigment, um, but it's definitely a more pink red. It's got some pink undertones to it. So I compared it with Scarlet from Paul Rubens, which is PR123. It's not a pigment I see very often in professional watercolors. So I'm not sure about the light fastness of that one, but that one is the closest match out of the ones I've tried here. Um, then we have Sennelier's Scarlet Lake, which is PR188, and this is the more traditional pigment for Scarlet Lake, and that's, an, you can see it's a more orangey red. And then Roma Schmall Scarlet Lake, which is also PR188, is even more orange toned than the Sennelier. But these two, I would say, are more similar to each other than they are to Scarlet Lake by Michael Harding. Um, I'd say the Scarlet Lake, like I said, I think madder, a madder red colour or a madder lake colour would be, or even a carmine, would be a closer match to this than other Scarlet Lake pigments. So just so you know, this Scarlet Lake is probably not going to paint up the same colour as you would expect from other brands Scarlet Lake paints. This is where, in this sort of situation, it's quite useful if you understand pigment numbers and if you've learned about them a little bit, you don't have to have them all memorized or anything, but you know, you can understand, you can recognize, okay, like you, you learn some of them, you learn your favorite ones. I'm, that's how I started. I learned my favorite pigments first. And then as I've expanded and exper experimented with other colors and stuff, I've sort of just learned over time the different pigment numbers because it interests me to know that information. Some people aren't bothered to know it and that's absolutely fine as well, but it can help sometimes to know what pigments you're looking at. So that's the first two pages. Move on to the next couple of pages. 
Um, then we're going to be comparing the quinacridone roses. So I have a few different options here. So this top one here is the Michael Harding one. Then we have Daniel Smith's quinacridone rose. They're all the same pigment. All of them use um, PV19. Then we have M. Graham quinacridone rose, Schmincker's ruby red, and then Winsor & Newton's permanent rose. I think the Michael Harding one is very similar to the Daniel Smith but it's also fairly similar, well, on the camera it doesn't look very similar to the M. Graham but in person it looks a little bit more similar to that than it does on camera but on camera and in person I'd say probably the Daniel Smith is the closest match which is interesting because Daniel Smith's quinacridone rose is definitely my favourite version of a quinacridone rose um, I don't mind the Shrinkers one but it's not my favourite Winsor Newton's one is okay uh, but the Daniel Smith one's definitely my favourite and it's nice to see that the Michael Harding is pretty much identical to the Daniel Smith one in terms of hue. Uh, then down here we have Thalo Blue Red Shade by Michael Harding and then I also have the Schmincke version on the right here. I'd say it was just easier to gradate the Schmincke one and get a lighter wash without all the colour running through whereas in the Michael Harding one um, I wasn't able to keep the lighter area light. But it's a pretty bog standard Thalo Blue Red Shade pigment. I'm not as big a fan of Thalo Blue Red Shade as I am the green shade. I much prefer my blues to lean green than to lean red. Um, if I had a choice, I probably would have not purchased, I wouldn't have purchased the Thalo Blue Red Shade myself. I would have probably picked an ultramarine, but it came as part of a set, so that's why I have it. And I'll probably use it in place of an ultramarine in mixes and stuff like that. Maybe add a bit of a pink or a red to it to kind of get it a bit more ultramarine looking shade. Then we have Indigo by Michael Harding, which is here. And I have four other Indigos to compare it against. Just zoom out a little bit here so you can see a bit clearer. There we go. Um, so the Indigo by Michael Harding is made up of PVK6, PV15 colon 3, and PV19. So that's a black pigment, phthalo blue green shade, and PV19, which could be any number of colours actually, because PV19 can be anything from like a quinacridone rose colour all the way up to a quinacridone violet, which is a much more blue or purple and I have a feeling it's probably more like a quinacridone violet um, type of colour that's in the mix rather than a quinacridone rose but I could also be very wrong I don't know for sure but that's that mix then we have pretty much the exact same mix in Paul Rubens just in a different pigment order um, and that's fairly similar maybe a bit darker again probably just a bit too much pigment here to get a lighter, a nicer light wash. The Sennelier Indigo is a bit different. This is made of PB60, which is Indian Throwing Blue, PB15 colon 1, which is a Thalo Blue Red Shade, and PBK7. This, this is a very blue leaning um, indigo, which is beautiful. I, it is probably one of my favorite versions of indigo. Then we have the Schmincke Indigo, which is a mix of PB15 colon 1, so the Thalo Blue Red Shade, and PB66, which is actual indigo um which is interesting so this is like a really nice sort of dark blue and there's no black in this mix which i like then we have winsor and newton's indigo which like all the others has black in it pv19 and pv15 so again another one that uses the same pigments as the michael harding indigo but in a different order and you can see the hue is quite different as well but I like the indigo from Michael Harding. I'm not sure it's my favourite version of an indigo. I think I would, if I wanted a, a more light fast indigo, I'd probably go for the Sennelier. Otherwise, if I wanted to go for a more true indigo, I'd go for the Schmincke. Uh, but I do like the Michael Harding one and I will definitely use it. So just wanted to point that out there as well. Then moving on to Vivid Blue, which I think is definitely one of the more unique colours um, that I have. I didn't really have a good, but it's also because I don't have a good match for it in my stash of colours. Um, so the Vivid Blue is a mix of two different white pigments, PW4 and PW6, PB15 colon 3, so that's Thalo Blue Green Shade, and PG7, which is Thalo Green Blue Shade. Um, so because it's got lots of white added to it, it is fairly opaque. 
Then I decided to try it against the Shin Han Blue Grey, which is just the Thalo Blue Green shade and white. You can see that's definitely more blue, it doesn't have as much green in it as the Vivid Blue. Then I tried an actual Cobalt Turquoise, which is what I felt this colour is trying to mimic almost. And that's a PB28 by Lucas, and this one granulates, but it's definitely more green leaning than the Vivid Blue. And then finally I have a paint by Paul Rubens called Azurite. This is PB15, PBR7 and PW6. I think this is the closest to the Vivid Blue, but A, it's a bit trickier to find. I purchased my tube on AliExpress, um, but also still it's not a perfect match. I'd say this is a bit more of a darker blue, more saturated blue than the Vivid Blue up here. So all in all, I actually do think this is a slightly more unique colour and if you are into this sort of opaque watercolours and this shade of blue, I would definitely recommend it. Right, then moving on to Caribbean Turquoise, which this mix is not particularly unique. PB15, Colon 3 and PG7 is a mix, this sort of turquoise colour is a mix that is offered by a lot of different brands. They call it different things, anything from uh, Thalo Turquoise to... Uh, transparent turquoise or like all sorts of turquoise names so I'd say this is a really nice one it's a bit more green leaning than um, say here Schmincke Helio turquoise which is PB16 so this is the single pigment version of a turquoise um, that usually these mixes are trying to replicate then we have Winsor Newton's aqua green which just says phthalo pigment on it doesn't tell you what the actual pigment numbers are and then we have Daniel Smith's Thalo Turquoise, which is PB15 colon 3, like we said. And this one is made with PG36, which is Thalo Green Yellow Shade. So a slightly more yellow leaning green pigment, which gives you that more greenish undertone to that one. Um, so overall, I don't think I marked any of them as being a particularly great match, but I'd say the Daniel Smith one is probably the closest, but still not quite same one but like I said this isn't a particularly unique mix it's just I don't have a close equivalent because it's such an easy color to mix yourself um, it's not one that I've ever really thought about having a convenience mix for on my palette but now that I have it I'll use it then we have the aqua green which is PG7 and PB15 colon 3 again this one came as part of like the uh, a set so it wasn't one I would have picked individually but it's a, basically a greener version of the Caribbean turquoise so it's got more phthalo green in it than phthalo blue. Uh, the only alternative that I had to compare it against was the Schmincke phthalo green which is PG7. This one looks a little bit pale mostly because I think I had there was a bit of binder separation at the beginning um, so I didn't get as much pigment out for the swatch as I would have done but it's also not the Schmincke's Thaler Green is not the strongest Thaler Green. I think uh, Roma Schmall's Thaler Green is a bit stronger. I've actually got my Roma Schmall palette here, so I'll just swatch that out quickly next to it and we'll see how that looks. Um, So hopefully you can see, I mean that's a bit wet, but you can see that that's a slightly darker colour. Um, let me just add a note so I don't forget what this one is. So again, I wouldn't say that's necessarily a particularly, a particularly unique colour, but I would use it in place of a phthalo green on, on the palette that I have. And be a good mixing colour. Then we have, um, actually, you get some really nice purples if you mix this with quinacridone rose so um, I do like it for that purpose. Then we have moss green which I purchased instead of olive green. Um, Michael Harding do have an olive green as well but I got the moss green instead because I thought it'd be a more unique colour and here I've compared it against some other olive greens and yes the moss green is definitely more unique than my standard olive greens that I really love. I do have this olive green by Paul Rubens which I would say is the closest match to the moss green by Michael Harding. Um, still not quite the same, but definitely has that earthiness that the Michael Harding 
paint does. Um, so yeah, I definitely think that's a unique, a more unique mix. It's not a colour I see very often from other brands. Maybe I'm just not aware of it. It has that PY150 pigment, so you have that brightness coming through from that yellow. Um, and then I've got it compared to, like I said, a few of my olive greens. I have Schmincke's olive green, yellow, uh, olive green yellowish, uh, Sennelier's olive green, and then Lucas's olive green. Um, I like all of them. The Sennelier one is probably my favourite of the olive greens, if I had to pick. But I do like all three of them um, a lot. And I like this one, and I like that it's different than my other olive greens. And then we have Hooker's Green. Again, um, Michael Harding did have a Sap Green as well, but I decided to go for the Hooker's Green because I don't, ha don't have a lot of Hooker's Green in my stash or any, really. That's why I'm comparing it against all my Sap Greens, or at least some of them. Um, but, so yeah, I thought that would be interesting to see. So I've got the Hooker's Green here. It's PG36, PR101 and PY180. I've compared it to Daniel Smith's Sap Green, which I'd say is more yellowish has more of a yellow undertone da vinci sap green which i'd say is fairly close and on this paper this da vinci sap green has a bit of granulation coming through which i thought was quite pretty as well then we've got m graham's sap m graham's sap green which is definitely more muted and i'd say it's probably more closely resembling an olive than it is the rest of the sap greens it's definitely a bit darker a bit more muted but not ugly by any stretch and then we have Shinhan's sap green which is pg8 so that's quite a unique pigment as well um so, but yeah i'd say the hooker's green is close to a sap green but not quite a sap green it's definitely a little bit just ever so slightly more blue undertone than the sap greens which is typical uh from a hooker's green i think hooker's green is typically more of a bluish green than a yellow green um and that's probably why i don't have a lot of hooker's green in my stash because i prefer yellow yellow greens like olives and saps than hookers greens and thalos um so yeah that's an overview and a bit of a comparison of the michael harding paints to some of the other paints i have the ones that i think are a bit more unique um close approximations from other color other brands um and yeah i do think they are beautiful paints they mix beautifully they um, go down on paper nicely. I really don't have any complaints about them. If you're in the market for trying out some new paints, they're available where you are. Um, I would definitely recommend trying them out. Maybe just purchase a couple of tubes of your favorite colors and um, see if you like them, or maybe pick out a couple of their unique mixes, like Moonlight or Belladonna. I'd say those are definitely some of my favorites from their unique mixes. Also the Bright Green Lake is really fun. I do like their quinacridone gold. Um, yeah, I definitely like their quinacridone gold. And the yellow lake I thought was a unique pigment. Like I said, I don't see PY180 very often. So, so yeah. That's... Oh, and the moss green. I'd say the moss green is quite a unique colour as well. Anyway, that's uh, that's my thoughts on these paints. I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, if you have any questions or if there's anything that you wanted to know about the paints that I didn't cover in this video, please let me know and I'll try and answer it in the comments below. All right, thank you so much for joining me. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and I will see you guys soon. Take care, bye.